Hey, welcome back everybody. If you've been following my channel for, well, any length of time, you've heard me mention on several occasions the ability to connect to traffic signals remotely. And they're making it so darn easy to talk to all the components in the signal cabinet, like the signal controller, the conflict monitor, the battery backup unit. Also, if you have a traffic signal video processor for the detection and the pedestrian button processor, also, I can talk to the IP power strip, which allows me to cycle power to individual ports to turn off the devices, such as a broadband radio, or the cell modem, or the ethernet switch. And having access to all these components allows me to program and troubleshoot the devices. But the biggest game changer of all these is my one-shot relay panel that you see here in the traffic signal cabinet. And here it is close up in my in-house setup, just a few relays. Uh, with some terminal strips and this is what allows me to remotely reset the conflict monitor if it detects a fault and having the ability to troubleshoot and repair traffic signals from afar it helps me out immensely because i have such a large coverage area to maintain and you're going to see how this setup came in real handy where in the wee hours of an early monday morning on mid-december where we had storms barreling through southern illinois here it is in red Coming through, this is shortly after they hit the area. My phone started blowing up with phone calls and texts that the signal was on flash. And here it is, the actual intersection in Marion, Illinois, at the intersection of Illinois 13 and Skyline. This was a major corridor that runs between two different towns. Let's just jump right into it here. This is the conflict monitor software I'm logging into here. Um, this is on the server. I've logged in via the VPN, checking that I make sure I have the right intersection. It is Skyline. And I'm gonna bring up the current status of the intersection, refreshing it every one second. You can see here that I've got load switch or channel 16 that's got a red and yellow that's up. And then it is up with three and seven. If I'm gonna check it versus the cabinet print, there it is, channel 16 is overlap D, which is my northbound right turn right there, and that is conflicting with phase three and phase seven, especially bad since phase seven is a southbound left turn. All right, jumping back here, I know we got the fault, so we're gonna go ahead and, and bring up the video detection cameras and the controller. I'm logged into both of them right now. You can see that we definitely do have the signal on red flash and the controller showing lockout stop time, which is what we're gonna show if we're in a fault. Now, this is where I get to use that one-shot relay panel and how we activate it is with a special function programming that's done in the controller, specifically special function one. This is, if you look at the cabinet print here, this is how it works. We're gonna activate that programming in the controller on special function one. It's going to send the output of the controller to this T panel at T12. It's gonna work its way through that relay circuit. And then the result being a logic output to the conflict monitor for a reset. So jumping back to the controller again, we're going to put an entry of one in that special function one. And you're going to see here in a minute when I pull this controller menu all the way that it's going to bring the signal out of flash and go through its startup sequence. You can see in the controller, it's got start time, start flash five, stop time. Here it is. We brought it out. It's going to an all red state. It's going to cycle through all of its phases here before coming out to its normal operation. Normal operation being coordination with all the other signals. Now we do have a camera currently down. As you can see here, this was a previous problem we had prior to the storm. So this is gonna require an on-site visit. But you do see that the signals are cycling and that we do have traffic moving now. Now the during this reset process, it does kill power and cycle power to the controller. So I need to reestablish a new connection to see the current operation. But if I go to my front panel again on my database, I'll log right back into it. And it's going to show that we are running coordination. So this signal is currently running again. In fact, if you pay attention in the background here on my dashboard, where I have a communication failure of seven, it's gonna drop out here in just a second and go to a six, showing that that traffic signal is now back online. Now, in addition, we do have the municipality follow up and put eyes on the actual traffic signal. So it does require an on-site visit. However, personally for me, at worst, I can troubleshoot the problem. 
and at best I could troubleshoot and repair it. So this isn't just fiction. This is a real life scenario where from two hours away, I was able to diagnose and repair the signal and get it going again. All right, guys, that wraps up today's video. Thanks again for following my channel and all the likes and the comments. I really do appreciate it. That puts this one in the books. I'll see you next week.